On the morning of April 22, 1913, a gruesome discovery was made. Murder, drunkenness, and poisoned cows. A local historian recounts some of the more bizarre stories from early 20th century Lowellville. Plus, demand for financial planners is growing, and a $470 million project in Ashtabula takes a step forward. This is The Daily Buzz. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Moliterno. Welcome to The Daily Buzz. In July 1914, then Mayor of Lowellville, Robert Erskine, had to deal with a problem he likely didn't anticipate when he was running for office. He had to settle a dispute between two residents, one of whom accused the other of poisoning his favorite cow. That's just one story related by local historian Rosalind Torella during a Bites and Bits of History program at the Mahoning Valley Historical Society. The talk Torella gave was titled Lowellville, Ohio, Murder, Mayhem, and More, and shares its title with her book. In 1912, the Newcastle News described the village as one of the rowdiest towns in the state. In the downtown section, there are saloons on every corner, the streets are filled with drunken men, and the lockup is usually full also. You can read Dan Heiner's full story and watch the full video by clicking the link below. Numbers Brewing in Lisbon has signed a distribution agreement with Heidelberg Distributing. The agreement will allow Numbers to supply its products to bars, grocery stores, and drive throughs throughout Ohio. Numbers was founded in 2016 and also distributes products in West Virginia. Waterfire Sharon has canceled its event scheduled for September 19th due to the coronavirus. It would have been the eighth annual event for Waterfire Sharon, which features the lighting of braziers in the Shenango River, as well as regional artists and musicians. As people live longer, they need to plan for longer retirements. That coupled with increasing financial obligations means an increasing demand for financial planners. In fact, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates employment demand for financial planners is expected to increase by 7% from now until 2028. Still, Jonathan Lapine, principal at W3 Wealth Management, says due to the nature of the business, which is trust-driven, it can be hard for young advisors to break into the industry. What we're asking of our clients is, is to basically turn over very personal information to us so that we can do our job. And, and what we're asking them to do is, is trust us with their financial livelihood. And that's a big ask, right? And, and, uh, and so, you know, you know, in this line of work, when it's trust-based, you really need to give yourself an adequate runway to build that trust. Two of the younger hires at W3 Wealth Management in Warren are Gene Daly and Ryan Glenn. Glenn will be featured in tomorrow's Three Minutes With, where he'll be discussing what young financial planners can expect when they enter the industry. The $474 million pig iron plant received a permit for its site in Ashtabula, just one of the stories we brought you over the weekend. Here's a quick recap in case you missed it. Petman USA, a subsidiary of South African-based Petman, received an air permit to construct a pig iron manufacturing plant on 30 acres at the Kinder Morgan Dock Terminal. In January, Petman said the plant would produce 425 tons of nodular pig iron a year and employ 100 workers. Dr. Jingxin Bao, an anatomy and neurology professor at Northeast Ohio Medical University, has been awarded a $2.18 million grant from the National Institutes of Health to produce the first human treatment for tinnitus. Tinnitus, which is a ringing or buzzing in the ears, affects 1 in 10 Americans, particularly veterans. And in getting ahead news, Vicki Wooden is now the new business development manager at the Amerifirst Home Mortgage Office in Poland. Wooden most recently worked in real estate with Berkshire Hathaway Northwood Realty Services. Kelly Framartino of Bury Financial Group has been named to the Sage Point Financial Administrative Advisory Board. The board allows staff and administrators to collaborate and share best practices. And Johnny Dubik has joined Bergen Friedkin Commercial Group as a commercial real estate agent. Dubik began his career in commercial real estate in 2014. And that is going to do it for today's Daily Buzz. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications if you're watching on YouTube. Please leave us a comment in the comments section. Let us know how we're doing. And as always, the links to all the stories we talked about today are available in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mike Moliterno. Business in town boomed, and to meet demand, the Village Jail increases the number of holding cells from a 20-person capacity to 40. And while the police force also grew it from two officers to six. 
By 10 p.m. on a typical Saturday, the cells were filled up and night court was underway. Pickpockets and drunks made up most of the docket. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, business services designed to meet your daily needs. Commercial loans, business deposits, merchant and payroll services. Seven Seventeen Credit Union. It's knowing you are treated right every time.